Hello folks, Richard Moore. We're going to talk about a tragic murder at the hands of killer cops. This is never a pleasant subject to, uh, to have to address. As you can see my filming equipment here has got a mind of its own. We're talking about Austin Hines, a 19 year old young man that was senselessly and recklessly assassinated by law enforcement in Lowndes County, Mississippi. I just obtained a recording of the police chase. I'm going to read to you before I play this recording, and I think it's essential that you listen to it. I will forewarn you that some of the language and the things that you will hear on this police traffic, radio traffic, is disturbing. And I'll leave it at that. It's approximately 23, just a little over 23 minutes long. During this recording, you, you'll hear just a few words of the individuals that were doing the recording that isn't a part of um, the conversations that the law enforcement were having with each other. As I continue to expose, and I do have other stories, not only do I have other stories, but the ones that have already been done about individuals in North Mississippi, whether it be from Monroe County on down, you can rest assured we're not finished talking about it. We won't stop talking about it until these individuals have been brought to justice. Not just the crash dummies. These frontline rat snitches that love to get out here and color, synchronize, stalk other citizens but the corrupt law enforcement those that are in positions of trust on the taxpayer dime controlling and running and condoning this behavior. On April the 1st, 2020, Austin Hines drew his last breath. His mother and dad We'll never see him again. Multiple times, Austin was shot. And then one cop finished him off with a shotgun blast to the face. As a result, he had to be cremated. Austin made some rap songs and it may be it contained unflattering speech, but unflattering free speech is still protected by the United States Constitution. I want to read you some of the facts as I have them.
that are now in court. This is from the wrongful death suit brought by Jason Hines, his dad. And I'm going to briefly go through these claims to set the stage. And you can look on my channel and you'll see the other stories done on Austin Hines. And I encourage you to do that as well. I encourage you not only that to look at the other stories that have been done as well. Gage Zirkins it's one that comes to mind in Amory, Mississippi. We haven't forgotten you, Gage. Zirkins. The claims stem from excessive force, arrest, constitutional deprivations, wrongful death caused by the defendants and their officers. The defendants, by the way, and their officers are, this is Lowndes County, and I'm going to assume, of course, CPD, Columbus Police Department. On or about April the 1st, 2020, Austin Hines was driving a car that he was unaware of had been reported stolen. The individual who reported the truck stolen informed the officer that he had given Austin the keys to the truck and that Austin had not returned with the truck based on the report, there's a question regarding whether or not the truck could be considered stolen. Of course, we know that at best, at best, it would be a misdemeanor unauthorized use. At best. The individual, um, Sorry about that. At some point, deputies for Lowndes identified the truck and Austin began to be followed by defendant officers who tried to initiate a stop of Austin. Now, you're going to hear all of this after I get through talking. You're going to get this. And I'll just have a still picture in there and you'll have audio only. Of, the, of this, of what happened in real time. Austin, a 19-year-old teenager, did not stop for the officers. Upon information and belief, Austin was afraid and confused when the pursuit began, likely because Austin was on probation and the fact that he had been targeted, tortured, and taunted by law enforcement since he was in grade school in Caledonia. Prior to the initiation of the pursuit, Austin was obeying all traffic laws. Unfortunately, Austin cannot explain his actions because he is dead. During the pursuit, miss second folks, no officer reported seeing Austin with a gun. Listen to me closely. The pursuit proceeded down narrow roads and through portions of the city of Columbus. Based upon the county and city defendants, I was right, on policies, the pursuit should have been terminated before Austin crashed his truck. I wholeheartedly agree. According to body camera footage, the defendants pursued Austin onto a railroad track near 2124 Strawberry Street. Austin crashed the truck he was driving and fled on foot. For some currently unknown reason, a defendant officer left his truck unattended and running in the direction that Austin was running. Austin climbed in to the unattended truck and tried to leave the scene. A 
Folks, this was someone running for their life. What I won't be reading here that is probably not in here and what I have learned from those closest to him. Austin already knew that day he would die. He was running for his life. Defendants had previously identified that Austin was the person in the allegedly stolen truck that we now know wasn't. Austin had fled on foot. During this time, defendants had Austin's passenger in custody before Austin climbed into the deputy's truck. In the deputy's truck, with the window up, Austin drove past all of the officers at the scene of the shooting and was fleeing. It appears that when Austin saw other officers in front of him, down the tracks, Austin turned his truck and steered away from the officers, heading back down toward the empty tracks. Without any person positively identifying that Austin was the driver of the second truck, officers opened fire on the truck. At this point, no person had been determined whether or not there was any passenger with Austin. This is the mere definition of reckless malice behavior of law enforcement. Only speculating as the officers did not know what Austin looked like when they opened fire. Officers opened fire not knowing who was around Austin when they started to fire, if anyone. Prior to opening fire, no officer had identified Austin as a danger or a threat to anyone. Officers were apparently present across the tracks, but these officers were not in any threat or danger from Austin when the officers opened fire. In fact, these officers would not be seen by the officers who initially opened fire. Officer briefly ceased firing at the truck once the truck was struck on the tracks the truck was stuck on the tracks, I'm sorry. According to body cameras, the truck appeared to be stuck on the railroad tracks. Without warning, multiple officers opened fire again. This is tough, folks. On the truck. <sighs> Firing dozens of rounds in the direction of of the other officers and into the truck and again striking Austin who was likely already dead. <clears throat> Multiple officers fired in excess of 30 shots from multiple angles and directions. When officers approached the truck, Austin was non-responsive. Despite officers discussing amongst themselves, Austin potentially having a gun, no gun was found in the truck. Upon review of body camera footage and reports obtained, Austin did not have a gun in the truck. According to the passenger from the first truck with Austin, there was no gun in Austin's possession. And you'll hear the lies on the police radio static. And you will hear the exaggeration. You will hear weak, phony, pathetic policemen saying, he tried to hit me, he almost ran over me, and so forth. After officers secured the truck, officers began 
to high five and fist bump each other for killing an unarmed 19 year old boy. I'm trying to hold it together, folks. Let me repeat this. This is what they do, folks, nationwide. After officers secured the truck, officers began to high five and fist bump each other for killing an unarmed 19 year old boy. Body camera footage substantiates this. Whose most serious crime was allegedly stealing a truck? Hmm. It's not entirely clear which officer says what. But at least one officer is heard on camera saying that Austin deserved what he got. Are you listening to me, ladies and gentlemen? This is court records. This is what is in court right now. continue. When Austin's father arrived on scene, he was yelling at officers, begging to know why they shot his son. Officers responded that they shot and killed Austin because Austin had stolen a deputy's car. Yeah, I've got a lot to say about that too. You just told with me, folks. That's our car. That's our car. Deputy, I will assure you, your ass is ours as well. Austin's bad decisions did not warrant a death penalty. Nor did the officers on scene have the right or authority to sentence Austin to death for crimes for Austin's bad decisions. Upon review of the videos and records produced by the defendants, officers lacked probable cause for use of deadly force. Austin had not placed any person in threat or imminent danger. Austin was attempting to flee down a railroad track in rural Lowndes County. When Austin began to flee, no officer or civilian was in front of Austin. And you'll hear the radio footage says it's all clear. No one's on the road. When Austin began to flee, no officer or civilian was in front of Austin. Officers moved themselves potentially into Austin's path. Once the truck was struck on the track, stuck on the track. But at this point, Austin was already dead. Following the shooting, officers are heard on camera admitting that no officer even knew that Austin was driving the truck. When officers initially opened fire on the truck, officers assumed it was Austin was driving, but folks, let me tell you, they knew it was Austin. I've got the proof for you, and you're going to hear it in a minute. But officers could have just as easily shot and killed one of their own based on their reckless disregard for the safety of others. That's exactly right. Austin was fleeing when he was shot in the back of the head by defendant officers. How's that make you feel, Lowndes County? Columbus Police Department? And the rest of the boys in blue? How's that make you feel to shoot an unarmed 19-year-old boy in the back of the head? But more shots came. Austin had not threatened anyone before or during the pursuit. Upon information and belief, some of the officers involved in the incident knew Austin and had prior history with Austin, both personally and professionally. Investigation will continue. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to play you 
the police traffic that was recorded from a scanner of what was going on. You've heard me give you a written blow by blow. Now I'm going to put it to you at the scene of the crime while it's taking place. Some of this can be considered disturbing. You will hear gunshots and you will hear them taping off the scene. We have a petition, Justice for Justin Hines. And in the description, I'll have a link where you can just click and sign that petition. At USA GSA, and what I do is totally funded and supported by our friends and viewers and their donations. Without that, we can't do what we're doing here. And if you feel that what we're doing, exposing this corruption, is something that you can support, I encourage you to do it now. There's a heart-shaped icon at the bottom of the screen with a dollar sign in it. You can click that and instantly make a, any donation of your choice. Or you can choose our GoFundMe link that will be in the description as well as a link to the petition and the Brady List and our Cash App link. So now I want you to listen to the recording. Please share, subscribe, and share, subscribe in Lowndes County and for my friends in Lowndes County. And with my friends in Steens and in Columbus, do your part. Let's make this go viral. Let's bring national attention to this atrocity, to this 19-year-old young man that was assassinated. And there was over 100 law enforcement involved in this. Until next time, God bless you. Now hold on for the recording. Almost hear gunshot. I mean, over the way, hand it, check over the way. It's going to be a 94 Chevrolet Silverado, teal green, set fast for the gray hood, primer hood. Thank you. 
me the tag. Lincoln 5 is a Clay County tag. Okay, I've got him here. Just lines and reads Charles Young 1, 3, 5, 8, 9. I got him. Thank you, Ryder. Stand by. Hey, that just lines. Forward bells here.
such time as Pete Pierce and Eve Alpha. Alpha Alpha. The 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 Alpha